In this Photoshop tutorial, we are going to take the best parts of two photos and merge them together using masks. But I want you to look at this tutorial a little bit deeper than that, because the, the idea for this came from a customer of mine, Jim Sleeper, who submitted the photos that we're going to use. And essentially he said, I've got one photo where the, the rest of the photo looks good, nice, good and sharp, but the water doesn't look right. But I got another one, slower shutter speed, water looks great, but the rest of the photo is soft. How do I, uh, how do I merge the two of these together? It's actually very simple to do, but I'm really hoping that you you expand past this to see how you can use ideas like this in your own photography, especially when it comes to things like tripods, um, where you know we can handhold a sh for a sharp photo pretty easily with a wide angle lens with enough light. But when we want to do a little bit of a longer exposure, it's harder to handhold. But with the advent of all the in-body stabilization, the lens stabilization, the, the noise reduction that we have in post. There's so many times where 10 years ago, I'd never leave without a tripod, where I will go somewhere without a tripod now because I know that I can get a sharp photo being handheld and knowing that I have some good noise reduction later on. So I encourage you to, to watch the tutorial. I think you'll find the Photoshop technique fairly simple, but I'm hoping that you can expand ideas from this from shooting to what you know that you can do over on the computer. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now, the first thing that we need to do is get both of these photos into the same Photoshop document. And there's a couple of ways you could do it. You could be coming from Lightroom Classic. There's a feature that stacks them for you. Maybe Bridge, maybe Camera Raw, maybe like whatever. Get them into Photoshop, get them into the same document. Worst case scenario, you open them up both separately like I have here, and then select all, copy, move it over to the other document, paste it in. I'll even rename that layer to blurry water because essentially what we want to do here is we want to get the blurry water in with the sharper version of the photo, which is the, the bottom version here. And you can see it, if I zoom in a bit here, you can definitely see the difference, sharp version, blurry version, just a little softer. And I think it's a good time to just really quick talk about that because if we look at the photo settings for the sharp version, I think it's worth discussing a little bit more about why Jim would have taken the photo this way is one one twenty fifth of a second for the sharp version of the photo. Most of us can handhold that, especially a wide angle lens. We can handhold one one twenty fifth of a second fairly easily. Okay. Now, if you look at the version of the photo that's got the soft water, take a look under the file info for this one, that is a half of a second. That's really hard for somebody to handhold, okay? You're gonna see any, any bit of movement for a half of a second, we're gonna see it. Now, even with in-camera stabilization, lens stabilization, we can get close, but I would still say that's a that's still a fairly slow shutter speed for most people to be able to handhold, and not everybody's got the cameras with the in-body and all of the lens stabilization as well. And there's just times because you're thinking to yourself, why not just use a tripod? I I am happy to leave my tripod at home whenever I can. It inhibits my creativity. It's hard to move around. It's clunky, and it's just simply not allowed in some places and draws more attention to you in what you're trying to do there. So I'm happy to leave it at home, and I can really appreciate what Jim did here because just by taking two photos, and you'll see this is super quick to do, we can get what we want. So let's go to the top layer here, and let's add a layer mask. We essentially just need to take the best parts of both of these photos. We add a layer mask to it. Now, the layer mask is white. We would take our brush tool and we would start to paint on it with black to affect it. The only problem is we'd have to paint everywhere but the waterfall. So if you wanna make your life a little bit easier, a simple keyboard shortcut, Command or Control I for invert, just inverts that mask from white to black, which now means we see the entire sharp photo the, the softer version of the photo with the blurry water is being hidden right now because the mask is all black. So now we take our brush tool. Again, we have to paint on it with the opposite color, which is white. And we'll just zoom in here and I'll just start to paint with my brush tool on the water. Right and left bracket keys, make that brush larger or smaller, but see, it doesn't take too long here couple of seconds and go through and paint. Okay, it doesn't, I, I, I challenge you to find a photo where you have to be absolutely perfect around the water and I know somebody's gonna have one, but most of the time 
around the grass, around the trees, whatever, we can get away with not being absolutely perfect with it. And as long as you're using a softer edge brush, you'll hide a lot of your tracks as well. And nobody's really gonna be looking at that area. Okay, so all totaled, I think from brushing, took me what, 30 seconds or so, and I'm talking through it, which is actually taking longer in there. So now what we did here is we went through and we masked out the parts of the photos that, to, that we wanted to keep. If you hold down your option or alt key and click on the mask, you can see if you missed any areas, it'll show you the black and white version of it. So we can just go through there and see if we missed any little areas there. Again, go option or alt click on it again, and that'll bring it back to the normal view. Now, I, I do have a couple of finishing touches that I think you should stay tuned for. If you give me just 60 seconds for a very quick word from our sponsor, which is always me, um, if what we did here is a little bit past your skill level, okay, I, I want to get you to where what we did here is very simple. You always hear people say, I don't want to spend a lot of time in, in Photoshop. If you shoot four posts and you do what we did here, it should take you no longer than 60 seconds. You should be able to get in and out. I'm just explaining it, which takes a little bit longer. But my Photoshop system course is the course that's meant to help people get there. And, and over the course of my entire business, this is the one that people come back and tell me has really helped them understand Photoshop because I cut through all the other stuff. There's so many things in Photoshop. And honestly, as a photographer, you can forget about 80 to 90% of it. We cover the essential tools like layers, selections, masks, adjustment layers, the necessary, the necessary filters, brushes, all the things. And I also talk along the way about things that you don't need to worry about. And that's the real key. It's impossible to master everything in Photoshop, but as a photographer, you can understand and really get good at just the stuff that you need. So I hope you'll swing by and check it out. It's on sale now uh, and you can check out the webpage to find out more. If you wanted to do any final cleanup or touch up to the photo, a uh, real simple thing that we can do. There's just one thing over here I wouldn't mind getting rid of. Uh, put all these, just merge everything into one layer. Command Option Shift E on the Mac or Control Alt Shift E on the PC. That will merge it into a new layer. Still keep your layers below. That's for all of you non-destructive police out there. I would have no problem merging everything down because I'll never want to undo this, but each their own and we'll go and grab our remove tool and let's just go in here and just paint right along there and see if we can't just get rid of that one thing right hand side if we're being nitpicky it doesn't bother me too much but i wouldn't mind uh, seeing that gone there and that, that actually did a really good job and there's a couple of branches and little twigs and things up there. You could probably spend a little bit of time if you wanted to, that might be just a hair distracting, but overall you get the idea of doing all that work on that one new composite layer at the top. Also, while you're here, I've got another free video for you to watch. You're obviously interested in Photoshop. So I got one on my favorite distraction removal tool inside of Photoshop. As of all the things that a photographer would go to Photoshop for, distractions and removing them are probably at the top of the list. So if you're looking for something to watch next, it's a great place to go.